Welcome to episode 12 of Go Low Like a Pro. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to hold my hands up. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to admit that there is a very strong chance that at the time of filming, we will not be able to include my interview with Dom Holland. I know I've been saying that for weeks, so I'm just going to shut up about it now until it's actually in the episode. So in the end, who knows what will have to be put back the most often. Dom's interview, me going for a lesson, or, I don't know, maybe like Bond film. I think we all know that there's only really one thing on that list that everyone is excited about seeing. And luckily for all of us, actually, we did just put out a press release that says that my lesson with Jane will be the entirety of part two of this week's episode. So that only leaves a couple more things that I said I would cover in this episode. Now first, preparation for the start of the new season and with the business end of the challenge just about to begin. Let's have a quick look at the World Handicap System and how I plan to keep tabs on my Handicap Index. So I'm going to look at the Scottish Golf website. Now it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can look at this and get more information on the World Handicap System. The whole point of the new system is to make it uniform across the globe so the rules will be the same in England, Germany, the States, anywhere. So first things first, how do you calculate a handicap index? Well, if I just highlight this bit, it's calculated by averaging the best eight score differentials out of the most recent 20 within your scoring record. Okay, so from your last 20 rounds, only the best eight count, and then they take an average. Seems pretty simple. Here is an example that they've used. Uh, the best eight of the 20 are highlighted in pink, and you take an average of the score differentials. So these numbers here, and that gives Adam a handicap index of 12.0, randomly enough, the same as mine. Now this bit's important for me because this is for guys who haven't played their full 20 rounds yet um, to count towards their new handicap system. I've played 13 so far, so I will have an average of my lowest four, which will increase five, six, seven as I play more, until I get to the average eight of the 20. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you might be wondering, what is a score differential? Uh, the difference between a player's adjusted gross score and the course rating, taking account of slope rating, it is the value played to on a specific course on a specific day. So, getting a lot more complicated. First, let me say I have no idea what an adjusted gross score is. Surely it's just a gross score. Help me out if you can, friends. So with the old system, it was simple. Gross score minus handicap equals net score. Now my understanding is that score differential is essentially the new net score. That's how I'm thinking of it. It's just calculated in a far more in-depth way, but it's the all important number that is average to give you your handicap index. So before you play around, you have to convert your handicap index into a course handicap that's based on the course you're playing and the tees you're playing from. Now that is because every single course has been individually rated for difficulty and they've called that the slope rating. So this is the calculation to get your course handicap. It's your handicap index times the slope rating divided by 113, which is a constant number. But we're not done there. Your playing handicap, the important one for your round that you actually play off, is your course handicap times your handicap allowance. For example, the recommended handicap allowance for individual stroke play events is 95%. So are we done? Is it your gross score for the round, or adjusted gross score, whatever that is, minus your playing handicap equals your score differential? Nope. There's then a playing conditions calculation that can lower your score by up to one shot or add up to three shots, depending on everyone else's scores on the course that day that give an indication of the conditions. You plug all that in, throw in a camel as a show of good faith, sacrifice a chicken, and then you get your score differential. And you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to talk about exceptional rounds or soft or hard caps, maximum hole scores or holes not played or anything else. That's the gist of what I need to know, and let's be honest, it's all going to be done by an app or a computer anyway. So, Alan Turing, if you're watching, thanks for all your help with those. Um, how about we put your face in a £50 note? Cool. 
Now, what I am actually bothered about is how I document it all, and then obviously share it with you guys. So I made a new graph to show my score differentials for each of my last 20 qualifying rounds, or at the moment, my last 13. The numbers in white are non-qualifying scores, and the numbers in yellow are the best four, which have then been averaged to make up my handicap index. I can update this every week and should hopefully be a fairly clear visual aid to show you what's happening with my handicap. Now that our brains are well and truly fried, let's do the other thing I promised to do in this episode, which is just to relax and unwind with a few holes on the course. But before we do, Special K gave me some feedback that the way I was reporting my scoring on the course uh, was confusing him. Uh, the fact that I was talking in net scores without clarifying they were net scores. Now, I thought I'd made it clear that that's how I was going to look at my scoring so that I could play live against my handicap, if you like. I mean, Albatross putt surely gave it away. But I'll try and be more clear from now on. A bit slappy hit the decky. That looks like it's in the bunkery. Terrible chip. My word, my shots are going nowhere. Not only are my shots going nowhere, this is a four, this is number four. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it's just pretty good. Pop this in the hole, hopefully. Save a five. This would be pretty huge, really, considering. It's not dead, it'll give me. It's certainly give me a chance. Bobbled it in. Superb save. Pretty decent shot, it's not an amazing shot. It's certainly up there somewhere, it's on the green, it's on the dance floor. So that was just three holes to show the continuing inconsistencies in my game. Three very different ways to play bogey golf or net par golf. Now I played a lot this week, very mixed golf, but I didn't score very well and not once did I play to my handicap. So let's have a quick look at the diary. We can see that I played 63 holes this week, or three and a half rounds, as well as getting a bit more consistent again with all the other bits of practice. You'll also see I had a lesson with Jane, which is all in part two, and roughly about 22 hours or so of golf practice this week. Next week I have no plans, it's the last week before the season starts and I haven't decided how I want to use that time, so it'll just be whatever I think of between now and then. We will, of course, still have excellent excrement. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Excrement. Excrement. Excellent excrement. 
So that was a nice chip in and a 345 yard drive. I think that's in response to me questioning the guys on shot scope and their 400 plus yard drives because I absolutely creamed that shot. I had a force 10 Dorothy Gale behind me, my ball overtook a spinning house, landed on the downslope and rolled down a hill. And even then I was still looking for it around the 290 mark. So to see it 60 yards further forward, well, that was the highlight of that round and of all my drives ever. To keep it balanced, I threw in missing a two foot putt and I don't even know what to call that at the fourth tee. So let's finish this part by having a quick look at your comments. Uh, Jonathan says, ordered the V3. Thanks for your help, it was the deciding factor. John, hope you like it. Shot scope, seriously, where's my commission? Um, Mike Windsor says, look forward now to seeing this practice affect the handicap index. It's amazing actually from my own experience, it took longer than I thought for all the practice I did to start paying off because something always let me down on the course. And then suddenly a thing called consistency arrived and down I came. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, definitely feel like consistency is an issue for me, certainly at the moment, but let's see what happens in the next couple of months. John Kirk comments, man, your swing looks so much better and your tempo looks a lot smoother. This might be the Abelauer talking, but I think you're going to accomplish your goal and go low like a pro. Thank you very much, John. Sober or not. Last week we had Alan and his eight-year-old daughter. This week we have John and his 12-year-old Scotch. Really is for the masses, isn't it? Uh, two more quick notices. I have been in touch with a chap called Big Boy Pants on Instagram and YouTube. Now, before you make up all your own jokes, he's a guy, another golfer who loves films, and so you may well enjoy his stuff if you want to check him out. And save the best for last, this week I spoke to golf coach Supremo and Sky Sports pundit Simon Holmes. Uh, Simon was Nick Faldo's coach when he was winning his majors and has coached, amongst others, uh, the likes of... Darren Clark, Thomas Bjorn, Ernie Els, Bernard Langer, Ian Woosnam, Jesper Parnovic, Vijay Singh, Lee Westwood, Mark James, Sevi Ballesteros, Nick Price, Curtis Strange, Ian Poulter, Podrick Harrington, Trevor Immelman, Constantino Rocca, uh, Suzanne Pedersen and Jean van de Velde. Constantino Rocco and Suzanne Peterson. Um, long story short, we're hopefully going to get Simon on the channel at some point and he is, fingers crossed, going to also help me out with the golf side of things. So very excited about that. I'm also very excited to share with you my lesson with the wonderful Jane Conakin. That's coming up in part two. There's lots of great golf stuff in there and Jane is actually hilarious as well. So if you enjoy the channel, you know what to do, you know about these and you know about this. See you all in part two. Till then, be good, and if you can, shout for it.